next time you're riding down the road in your car, sing this to the Lord. You'll get where you're going much faster. Come. Let us. Down before him, kneel down before him, worship and adore him, worship and adore him. Come on, say it again. Come, come, let us. Gracious Father, we gather with thankful hearts that you have afforded us this day, a new day that opens for us new insights and opportunities to come to know you better. Thank you for this occasion that as we study your word, it will open itself up in us that we might live it out in our daily activities. Master, thank you for this new opportunity to have your word presented to us that it might serve as a directive for our living with you and for you in this time of renewed hope. May the birth of Jesus serve as a catalyst for us to see your divine intention in every birth and in every life. May we then develop a greater awareness of the purpose and the worth of human beings and be inspired to see in them greater potential. Help us to imagine the great possibilities that you make available in us and to us as we study your word and come to understand that you placed potential in us even before we were born. You formed us while yet in the womb that upon birth our lives would have purpose. Give us wisdom and insight into your purpose for our lives. Broaden our perspectives that we do not allow the challenges of life to blind us of the possibilities you have set before us. Make us to know that with these limitless possibilities come our opportunities to be a greater, of greater service to you as we work to be of service to each other. Make us useful in building and giving strength to our families. As we share time with family during this Advent season, Empower us to give hope and to inspire others to be hopeful within their families. As you are a blessing to us, we pray that what we do in this study and in this day it would empower us to be a blessing to others. And may this learning experience equip us to be faithful disciples for you. We ask it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Matthew 18, chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Verse 18 says, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man because he didn't want to humiliate her he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. 
Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to the son. Joseph called him Jesus. Greetings, December 13, 2020. Uh, as we celebrate the third um, Sunday in Advent, as well as that we celebrate the 150th year uh, since the founding of the CME Church on this December 13. Uh, and the lesson today comes from Matthew 1, 28, 18 through 25, and it's called to participate in a promise. Uh, the universal statement that we can make is that a newborn baby inspires us to wonder about the potential of human life, of every human life. And the question that comes from that, how do we understand the designs of our lives? In the scripture, Joseph's call to form a family with Mary suggests that God calls us to give hope to the world through our families. Uh, the goals today is to remember the story of the angel's announcement to Joseph of Jesus' birth. And the, 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 the effective goal is to rejoice that the birth of Jesus fulfilled God's promise to be with God's people. And then the action goal is to live with greater awareness of God's abiding presence. Uh, so the first verse of the day uh, talks about the birth of Jesus Christ. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph but before they lived together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Matthew doesn't really tell us about the birth of Jesus. Luke does that. Matthew instead tells us where Jesus came from and it tells the story through the eyes of Joseph. Uh, there were essentially three steps to marriage in the Jewish world of, of Jesus' time. There was the engagement stage or engagement step. This would happen when the bride and the groom-to-be were quite young and was often arranged by the parents. Then there was the betrothal. Uh, this made the previous engagement official and binding during the time of the betrothal. Uh, the uh, couple were known as husband and wife, and betrothal uh, could only be broken by divorce. Betrothal typically lasted a year. And then there was the marriage step. This took place after the wedding, after the years of the betrothal. Uh, Matthew, plainly without the greater detail found in the Gospel of Luke, presents the virginal conception and consequent birth of Jesus. However, the virgin birth was difficult for people to believe back then, even as it is also doubted now by some. We should consider what a great trial this was for a godly young woman like Mary and for Joseph, her betrothed. Her situation was the most distressing and humiliating that can be conceived. Nothing but the fullest consciousness of her own integrity and the strongest confidence of God could have supported her in such trying circumstances where her reputation, her honor, and her life were at stake. The truth of the supernatural conception of Jesus was disbelieved and many, by many then and was later twisted into lies about the parentage of Jesus. Reference was made to these suspicions in passages like John 8.19 and 8.41. Lies spread that Mary had become pregnant from a Roman soldier. Here Matthew set the story straight. Both then and now, there was no other way of, of his being born. For had he been a, of a sinful father, how should he have possessed a sinless nature? He is born of a woman that he might be human, but not by man that he might not be sinful. Her husband, Joseph, in the, uh, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly, the 19th verse says. Mary was betrothed uh, to uh, Joseph. Here, even though they were not formally married, Joseph was still considered Mary's husband by betrothal. Uh, being a righteous man, Joseph knew 
that if Mary had been unfaithful to him, it would be impossible to go through with the marriage. Yet his nature as a righteous man also did not want to make this an unnecessary hardship or stigma upon Mary. Joseph made the understandable decision to seek a quiet divorce. To dismiss, dismiss her quietly refers to breaking an engagement by divorce. In Jewish culture at that time, a betrothal was binding and one needed a divorce to break the arrangement. Then in the 20th verse, but just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. 21st the verse says, she will be, bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This was not the angel of the Lord, but simply an angel of the Lord. Perhaps it was Gabriel who was prominent in the announcement made to Mary and Zacharias. Yet, those were actual angelic visitations. This was presented to Joseph in a dream. The dream came while he had made resolve to divorce Mary. Joseph was understandably troubled by Mary's mysterious pregnancy, her future, and what he should, be, should do towards her. Though he had decided to put her away secretly, he was not comfortable with that decision. The address, son of David, should have alerted Joseph that something was particularly significant about this message. Son of David is a reference to Joseph's legal lineage to the throne of David. It seems that Mary had not told Joseph that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. This shouldn't surprise us. How could she, or how could anyone except God explain such a thing? This angelic word to Joseph was persuasive. The name Jesus, the salvation of Yahweh, was fairly common in that day. Uh, Josephus, uh, the historian, mentions it 12 different men named Jesus in his writings, but it is supremely blessed in our day. As was later said by the apostle Peter, there's no other name under heaven by which people must be saved in Acts 4.12. The angelic messenger briefly and eloquently stated that the work of the coming Messiah, Jesus, he will come as a savior and come to save his people from their sins. This description of the work of Jesus reminds us that Jesus meets us in our sins. But his purpose is to save us from our sins. He saves us first from the penalty of sin, then from the power of sin, and finally from the presence of sin. Wonderfully, it says, his people, if it had said God's people, we might have thought it was reserved for the Jewish people alone. But it isn't belonging to Abraham that brings salvation from sin. It's belonging to Jesus, being one of his people. And then the 22nd and 23rd verse, all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. To fulfill this was the first use of the important phrase, which will become a familiar theme throughout Matthew. Matthew rightly understood that the supernatural conception of Jesus was prophesied in Isaiah 7:14. There has been some measure of controversy regarding this quote from Isaiah 7:14, primarily because the Hebrew word Alma can be translated as either virgin or young woman. We take the Isaiah, Isaiah passage to speak of Jesus because it says the virgin shall be with child, and that conception will be a sign of David's entire house. Those who deny the virgin birth of Jesus like to point out that the Hebrew word in Isaiah 7:14 translated virgin, Alma, can be also translated as young woman. The idea is that Isaiah was simply saying that a young woman would give birth, not a virgin. While the near fulfillment of the Isaiah prophecy may have reference to the young woman giving birth, the, the far or ultimate fulfillment clearly points to a woman miraculously conceiving and giving birth. This is especially clear because the Old Testament never uses the word in a context other than virgin and because the Septuagint translates Alma in Isaiah 7:14 categorically virgin. Emmanuel, the title of Jesus refers to both his deity, that's God with us, and his identification and nearness to humans, God with us. Jesus is truly Emmanuel, God with us. 
Christ indeed was not called by the name Emmanuel that we anywhere read of, but the import of the name is most truly affirmed and knowledge acknowledged to be fully made good in him. And what since then is the Christ God with us. Jesus is called Emmanuel, or God with us, in his incarnation, God with us. By the influences of the Holy Spirit and the holy sacraments and the preaching of the word uh, in private prayer. And God with us through every action of our life that we begin, continue, and in, end in his name. He is God with us to comfort, to enlighten, to protect, and defend us in every time of temptation and trial, in the hour of death, in the day of judgment. And God with us and in us and we with and in him to all eternity. We can deeply meditate on the meaning of the name Emmanuel. It shows how low God bent down to save humans. He added the nature of one of his own creatures in his own divine nature, accepting the weaknesses, frailnesses, frailties, and dependency that the creature experienced. It shows what a great miracle it was that God could add a human nature of his own and still remain God. It shows the compatibility between the unfallen human nature and the divine nature. That the two could be joined shows that, the, that they, we are truly made in the image of God. It shows that we can come to God if God has come to us. Then we can come to God. Then if Jesus Christ be God with us, let us come to God without any question or any hesitation. Wherever you may be, you, you need, or whatever you need, no priest, or you don't need a priest or intercessor to introduce you to God, for God has introduced God's self to us through Jesus Christ. John Wesley said, John Wesley died with that upon his tongue, and let us live with it in our hearts. The best of all is God with us. And then finally, the final verses of our lesson for today. When Joseph awoke from sleep, and he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relationships or until she had become a son, and he named him Jesus. Jesus Joseph's obedience is noble. He did not doubt or waver. He instantly understood the truth and the importance of the angelic messenger that came to him in the dream. Did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, the words, but had no marital relationships with her until she had born a son, implied that Joseph and Mary had normal marital relations after Jesus' birth. This emphasizes that Jesus was conceived miraculously. Matthew wants to make Jesus' virginal, virginal conception quite unambiguous, for he adds that Joseph had no sexual union with Mary until she gave birth to Jesus. This also denies the Roman Catholic dogma of the perpetual virginity of, of Mary. The marriage was thus formally completed, but not consummated before the birth of Jesus. The Greek expression, uh, not until, would normally suggest that the intercourse did not take place after the end until uh, after the end of this period. There is no biblical warrant for the tradition of the perpetual virginity of Mary. This is an unbiblical doctrine which did not appear early, uh, earlier than the 5th century after Jesus. It should be placed with the dogmas of Mary's Immaculate Conception, Assumption into Heaven, Present Role in the Mediator between Belief. Each one of these a human invention meant to exalt Mary in an unbiblical manner. So we as Protestants reject that, uh, that lifting of Mary in that way. And he named him Jesus. This is the good news. They did what Jesus told them to do. Though it was a fairly common name, it had a genuinely great message and would come to be the greatest name, the name above all other names, the name Jesus. That is our lesson for today. I commend that you look at the challenges as always that come on the next slide, uh, the challenges for the week. Blessings to you on this third Sunday of Advent and the celebration of the 150th year of the CME Church.
when praises go up, blessings come down. I dare you learn to praise him even in the midst of a trial. Come. Let us. the song by now. Come. Come. Let us adore him. Everybody. 